What is up everyone? Welcome to something a bit new to the channel, old school magic content. Yes, I was lucky enough to set up my camera at War of the Roses 2 this past April in 2024 and record every single match. Don't worry, pre modern content is not going anywhere, but I have been really enjoying this old school format and wanted to highlight it with all of you guys. So without further ado, let's jump into the round one deck list. Let's get into our first deck list by Tanny, and it looks like he's running a classic pink weenie list. There are a few notable exceptions though. I noticed that there's no Savannah Lions, which is very interesting. And of course he just has some amazing altars, those Tundra Wolves I believe he actually even did himself, which might be why there's no Savannah Lions, so you can run those instead. If you're not familiar with pink weenie, it is basically a mono white aggro list that splashes red for red removal, or red direct to the face damage, as in the four lightning bolts and four chain lightnings. He also has a one of Preacher, which is really unique and very cool. Try to steal one of the bigger creatures on his opponent's board, having removed all the rest with either his direct damage spells or the uh, source to plowshares. His sideboard also has a transformative edge to it, turning it into more of a land's edge deck with land tax and land's edge for the more grindy games. Overall, a really cool list. I can't wait to see how it plays. Next up is Doug on Lich Combo. Now I'm not 100% familiar with this deck. I did actually end up playing against it in like round five or so, but ultimately I believe the combo here is just generating so much mana through fast bond and drawing so many cards through Dark Heart of the Woods and Lich that you're eventually able to either Brain Geyser or Fireball your opponent to death. Interestingly, this also does not run Mirror Universe, which I think is sometimes generally considered the main win con of Lich combo, but in the sideboard it is transformative where he goes into just massive beaters when everyone takes out all their creature removal. Very fun list, very fun to play against. I was definitely not expecting the transformative sideboard. Yeah, just overall a really cool deck. I can't wait to see how it performs. Okay, we have Tanny on the left and Doug on the right. I'm gonna get a little roll off here after the cut and I think Tanny is gonna be going first which is exactly want, uh, what you want for your aggro deck. Now, one of the trickiest things here is, of course, going to be able to tell what cards are what because of all the altars. <laughs> I try to memorize it, so I'll do my best. Um, one of the nice things about old school really is uh, just all the cool art and history with what is honestly the oldest format. Okay, so it looks like Tanny's got a Tundra Wolves, a Swords, some lands in hand, including a Mountain. I don't think he's got a Burn spell yet. At the very least, he's going to be able to put down some power turn one, which is exactly what you want to be doing. Following that up with either a Crusade or a slightly bigger creature obviously would be a fantastic way to go into turn two, but... I think he is really going to have to be aggressive here um, against this combo deck and try to avoid what I'm assuming is a very quick uh, win once all the pieces are on the battlefield. But Doug is looking at putting one back. And looks like he is going to be keeping the six, which is good. I'm not exactly sure how prevalent combo decks are in old school, but uh, I have to imagine that the London Mulligan does help them quite a bit, as with all combo decks when that rule was changed. Okay, we got a keyboard six. And Tanny's gonna just start us off with the wolves and go. And again, I think he did that alter himself, which looks absolutely fantastic. All right, I'm just gonna get a Bayou and pass. Ooh, is that an Armageddon? One thing I didn't mention in the deck tech is there are two Armageddons in the list, which really help him and may punish uh, Doug. Being able to get enough pressure on the board early where you just wrath the board and while your opponent's still rebuilding, you're having lethal is definitely <laughs> a problem. And it looks like he does get to lead out with an order lipper, so aggro creature and a slightly bigger aggro creature. Ooh, and we got a howling mind coming down. Uh, sweet altar on that. So as long as it's untapped, everybody gets an extra draw. 
Gonna add a little counter just to remind himself to get that extra draw. And it looks like both were lands, which is not exactly what you want, <laughs> but uh, at least you got him out of the way early, and assuming you have turn three play, which looks like he may not. It does make his Armageddon not as great either. Uh, having your opponent draw so many cards where they get a bunch of lands. Okay, we are going to buff the, uh, the Orlipper here, take a bunch, drop to 15. Give that extra draw. And it looks like Doug also drawing two lands, but I'm not sure what else he has in hand currently. Okay, tapping the library. Very good with Howling Mind, just get an extra draw. Why not? <laughs> we do see a Mox. And it looks like a lot of lands. He might actually be a little flooded here. Play another Bayou. The Bayou is specifically good because you can sack them to the Dark Heart of the Woods, being a forest. All right, Mox coming down. And it's just going to pass, actually. So not a lot happening here. And Tanny's got to be wondering what's going on. Doug is pretty famous for playing Lich Combo, so some of the regulars here, which I believe Tanny is one of, uh, may already know what he's up to. <laughs> but Tanny also not finding a ton. Is going to play out a mountain. That Swords is not going to have any targets in game one, and if he takes them out, uh, I think he's going to be missing a good Oh, he does have a Preacher, which, again, is not going to have a target game one, but might just be playing it out. No, nope, we're just going to Armageddon. Getting rid of that Mountain, so I'm assuming he has at least one more in, in hand. And swing in. That Mox looking even better with that uh, Armageddon hitting the board. All right, drawn two more. Finding plenty of lands, and I think that's an altered demonic tutor that he just drew. Why you coming out? And is gonna pass. So maybe not a demonic. All right, both players with a grip of cards at this point, thanks to Howling Mind. Tanny with two swords, still not doing anything, but has the pressure on the board. Take him down to nine, and a Javelinier coming down. Drawn two, ooh, we got a Lotus, and is that a recall? Maybe not exactly what Doug needs right now, but a lot of power in hand. So you're not really able to see what else he has going on. Ooh, there is a... Is that a Eureka? I don't know if I caught that in the, uh... In the, uh, deck photo. Hmm. Alright, land coming down. Black Lotus hitting the field. And are we going for it here? I feel like you kind of have to. Um, all you need is for your opponent to draw a crusade and uh, it's game over. We're pretty close to it. All right, three floating. Okay, Eureka hitting the field. So it is in his deck. I must have missed it in the in the deck photo when I was doing the uh, the run through. But we're gonna be playing out a bunch of stuff. Each player taking turns. Ted's gonna play out a preacher. And this is just a great way to get all of the permits in your hand out on the field. Maze of it. Again, not gonna do much in this matchup, at least in game one. And that's it. Both players are out of permanence. Alright. 
using three. Let's time twister. Both players getting a fresh seven. We'll see if Doug can uh, pull out a win here because without a win this turn, I think Tanny's just going to have it. There's way too much pressure on the board. He's getting a fresh seven, which hopefully will give him uh, a few burn spells to push across that extra bit of damage. He does only have one mountain right now, but could be relevant. At the very least, you probably see one more mountain. I'd have to guess. All right, well, let's see what we're drawing. All right, Doug gets another Eureka and a Mox. So he's not gonna have the mana to Eureka again, it looks like. but still has something to do. I do two, take a point, drop to eight. Doing a little math here. And it's just gonna go for it, go down to eight. Library hits the field, okay. Not exactly what you wanna see, and is just gonna pass the turn, and if Tanny drew any burn spell, this is Game over. Still drawing two as well off of the uh, the Howling Mine. And does he have it? I think I do see a Lightning Bolt. I think this is all locked up for Tanny. And we're just going to go to combat first. Swing with everything. Buff up. Any responses? No responses, lightning bolt. And that is going to be game number one. Okay, game number two. Now, in theory, this is the one where Doug has brought in all his creature threats, and Tanny, seeing absolutely no creatures, will probably have sided out all his removal and put in those uh, lands tax and lands edge. No, in fact, does actually keep at least the swords in. At least one sword. <laughs> and that is a Black Lotus as well. Does he have a turn one threat, though? But Sarah Angel is looking mighty tempting. All right, well, both players are going to be keeping a seven. Doug is just going to play a Bayou and pass. Can't quite tell what's in his hand. Looks like some blue power at least, but maybe not a way to cast it. I just see another bayou and can't quite tell what the other card right behind it is. All right, Plateau, Chain Lightning. So no turn one creature, but he's gonna start off with three points to the face. All right, does get that blue mana source. Let's draw some cards. If there's one thing that this deck wants to do, it does seem to be draw cards. <laughs> oh, he does have a time walk as well. And a time twister? Jesus. An abundance of wealth. And a mox. All the mox. And it's just actually going to pass the turn here. Doug, I think, is considering going for the Sarah Angel here. There is no blue up. So crack them all, and his one of Sarah is hidden in the battlefield. I wonder if he did the altar on this one too. It does look very clean. All right, we got underground C. One extra blue source. Got a Sylvan Library. We'll find some answers. 
Let's just take an extra turn. And see what the library finds for Doug. Okay, looks like a howling mine, maybe. A few other things. Oh, and that actually wasn't a time twister. That's a, it's a gin. Okay, so he did switch to the creature plan. And we'll be able to cast it out. And here you go. <laughs> Danny wondering what happened to the combo deck. But still has the swords to uh, to deal with it. Not falling for the ruse. I think yeah, you just have to have to go for the swords. Didn't take it out. Whoops. <laughs> Gain five. Take four. And a knight coming down and pass. Looks like he might have just drawn another Jin. I think considering taking a little bit of extra damage here just to get some more cards. tapping it all out and what are we gonna see another gen <laughs> Danny cannot believe it what is going on where is this lich combo deck that was supposed to be uh, his from the game one at least easy matchup and he is also maybe getting a little flooded here does get strip mine what is worth stripping here? Probably the underground scene. No, in fact, is going to take the taiga. Must be. I don't know. I think taking two blue sources out, dropping just one, so he doesn't have to fade counterspell. Not knowing if it's in the deck or not would maybe be a good plan, but I am again no old school uh, player. <laughs> And yeah, just a Tundra Wolves coming down. No swing in. Doug going to his turn, getting a Mox. And. Ooh, does have a trike. Okay. Triskillion hitting the field. Gonna clean up all those small creatures. Or at least threaten to. This is not his lich set. Yeah, is this, is this game two? Game two. Game, two. game one? Shoot and shoot. I got him game one. Which one are you shooting? One of the one of the eight. And it's just gonna ping him. There you go. Get ahead. Suddenly your board is a lot less threatening. Oh. And now would not be the time to draw a crusade. Well, actually, no, it would still be good, but definitely not as good. And no, nope, just gonna pass. Looks like the creature beatdown plan is, in fact, working. At the very least, as a way to stall. Oh, and forgot the library trigger. <laughs> but hadn't done anything with it yet, so still able to do it. I think now does have a time twister in hand. Maybe he did all along and he just got shuffled around. But it's just keeping a land. Thinking about firing it off. And no, we're just going to copy artifact, copy the trike. Gonna use all counters to shoot the Sarah Angel and is able to swing in. And now who is the beat down? I'm still, I just can't. I don't pass there. Go ahead. 
Trike for two mana seems like a uh, screaming deal. Alright, it looks like that's a javelin air. It's not exactly what you want to see against an army of big creatures. Although trikes are considerably less large. Okay, looks like kept another land. Which is interesting. Oh wait, no, he didn't. He got a soul ring. There we go. Even more mana. What are we going to be using all this mana for? That is the question. All right, and how much damage do you want to take? Looks like Tanny's not going to block any of it. Doing a little thinking here. I was, I was lich, straight lich being one. He does have an Armageddon, which would not be a great thing to use here. <laughs> Unfortunately, he is not ahead on board, and having his opponent have three pieces of mox, right, three moxen and a soul ring, I believe. Yeah, because he has a mox jet kind of under the underground sea. Killing one copy of the trike. The copy of the trike, I should say. <laughs> and is seriously thinking about Armageddon here. That is very interesting play. That's going to play out of land. Okay, now down on mana. No cards in hand. And we're just going to keep swinging in. Go to one, right? Yeah. All right. This is, I think, going to be over. I don't know if there's much that can be done when your opponent's on 18. You have one land and I think a lightning bolt. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to do it. That's going to be game number two. All right. So the cyborg creature plan coming in clutch for Doug picking up game number two now the real question is did he keep with it or did he go back to the combo and there's a fireball which you wouldn't necessarily take out if you were still going with creatures but he is also not on the play this time so Danny definitely does have the advantage if he's got a turn one creature or Chain Lightning. Probably picking the Chain Lightning over the Bolt because doesn't want it copied back at him. Mana Leak, I believe the draw for Doug. Okay, so I think we're gonna see a Soul Ring here. Yep, and then just another Bolt. All right, we're just doing direct damage at this point. No creatures. in uh, Tanny's hand at the moment. Let's just draw three real quick. Some discussion happening. Uh, okay, looks like we've got some stuff to do. Yeah, I'm gonna hit the field. Is that double mox in hand? It is. All right, we're gonna get a howling mine out. Tanny's gonna put a little reminder to keep drawing all those cards. And just gonna pass. Both players with a lot of mana. See who can capitalize on it first. Doug Nobly doesn't have mana leak mana up. Just one blue. Right? Alright. So we're gonna go for it. Big Angel. Go. 
definitely a good way to close down games quickly. Especially if your opponent doesn't have a way to deal with it other than, uh, say, blocking with another creature. He does have a fireball, though. Doesn't have quite the mana to utilize it yet. Alright, we are going to recall. Get back the draw spell. Tap two. For a dark heart of the woods. <laughs> this spell lets you sack a forest, gain three life. I think there's other stuff on it, but I think that is the the main thing. So safe to say that Doug has gone back to the combo. Maybe the combo never fully leaves the deck, even when he brings the creatures in. But I think having that is a pretty good sign that the uh the combo is the goal. Ooh, and an Armageddon. I believe that's what that is. And Tanny's hand. Alright, we got a Chaos Orb. Are we going to see a flip? How much is that Dark Heart doing for Doug at the moment? Probably not Armageddon here now. Doesn't seem to have the mana. It's gonna take you to seven. All right, we're gonna do an orb flip. First one of the day, and it hits. Her cart is down, and choosing not to sacrifice any of his forests. Which could have been a mistake. And right, we got a javelin here coming in. And it's gonna pass. Not swinging with the angel. Or did he already? He must have already. I must have just missed that. Alright. Bonus down to seven. Let's draw some cards. There's a brain geyser. Definitely not decking anyone right now. But could help draw you into something good. Alright, we're tapping a bunch. And we're just going to fireball the angel. Or... Water Polo the Angel. I guess that's it we're with that altar. Very funny. Uh, all right, so that definitely does buy you some time. To find the combo. All right. But your opponent is going to be drawing two cards. And can easily refill on threats if he can stop drawing lands. That is a wasteland, though. I think taking... Nope, not taking them off of blue mana. Just gonna hit the bayou. I guess was the only untapped one. And oh, that must not be a uh, Armageddon. Is that a disenchant? I'm guessing it is. All right, that's a very cool disenchant. Blowing up the, the Death Star. And just gonna swing it for one. Take it a six. Notably not getting rid of the Howling Mine. Maybe valuing the card draw for himself. Uh, it is a good card. It does help both players, but you have to think that giving the combo player more cards is not the best idea. And there's another disenchant. So he could at least hit it this time. You also have a Aura Lipper Knight. Yeah. 
but Doug does have mana leak mana open. And are we going to see it here to save one of his pieces of power? We are not. And a swing in for one, take it to five. Tap two more. And that thing is worth mana leaking. <laughs> Still taking a point, but at least giving your opponent less creatures to swing in next turn makes a lot of sense. And it's gonna pass. Alright, I do see a fast bond in Doug's hand. Does he have the other pieces he needs? for the combo. I think I do see a Lich. And I'm not quite... Oh, the two is from the, uh, the Mana Leak. Okay, so he's got two floating. Uh, brain Geyser in here? I guess so. Gonna be drawing four? Right. Two to cast it. Not sure why he's taking a point there. He did already take one off the city, I'm pretty sure. Okay, there's a Mox. And I wonder if he's almost at too low life for this to work. Lotus coming down, Fast Bond coming down. Crack the Lotus for the Lich? Did you play a land this turn? I don't think he did. Play a land. Take one. Play no land. Take one. I crack the lotus. Are we gonna see this? He is definitely going for it. Three black floating, I imagine. This has to be like you have to go for it. You're at one life. That javelin air is going to kill you one way or another. Interesting. Alright, we're going for a redraw. He must not have what he needs to win the game. So that must be two blue floating, not black. I think really counting on uh, seeing that Lotus again. Because you need three black for the, the Lich, right? You're not able to fast bond anymore until you do that. Again, though, I, I have actually not seen this combo work in person. And there is a dark heart. And a piece of power, but I think he needed the Lotus. Also, very risky, I just realized. I think Tanny still has one red open. And if he drew a lightning bolt, <laughs> which he did not, uh, this game would be over anyways. But did not draw the bolt, so this game is still live.
And I think Doug just making sure he's got an out here. I believe that altered card is a recall. Nope, that's going to be the handshake. And that is game number three going to Tanny, who takes it down. All right. Thank you to everyone for watching. This was a ton of fun. We have five more rounds of this old school tournament that I'm going to be peppering in throughout all the pre-modern content as well. Make sure to leave a comment down below if you play old school, if you like the format, or if this is your first time ever seeing it and what you thought. Because it is definitely a bit different than pre-modern, but is a ton of fun in its own very unique way. If you haven't tried it out yet, I highly recommend it. Some tournaments and some groups do allow proxies. I believe actually the regrowth Cup, which is going to be happening here in Portland in the fall will be proxy friendly so keep an eye out for that I'm sure I'll be mentioning it in future videos as well again pre-modern content is not going anywhere just keep an eye out for later this week because there'll be a second video yes I'm doing two videos a week now I've been doing it pretty consistently and it's been a blast thank you to everyone who's liked and subscribed and commented on all of those if you've done all of that and you want to support what I'm doing even more letting me do tournaments like this one or uh, just upgrade my equipment there is a patreon link down below it is mostly a tip chart at this point if you just enjoyed what i've been doing i eventually will add rewards and that kind of stuff to it but yeah that's definitely a great way to support the channel anyways guys thank you for watching and i'll see you next time